get ready to say goodbye to some of these brand new sidewalks. Now, not everything will be ripped up, but the upcoming sewer project may cause some headaches for residents. There are some things you and I can do to help make officers jobs a little bit easier. If you get pulled over, stay aware of your surroundings. Check your mirrors. If another car pulls up, honk your horn to get the officer's attention. So whether you give a little or you give a lot, you're making the holiday a little bit brighter for families who need it most. They're understaffed, overworked, overcrowded and unsafe. Now, Police have not released much information at this time, but we do know that this is a death investigation. It all started in the small courtroom in the building behind me. Each friar sat before the judge this morning and accepted charges of covering up years of child sexual abuse. Terrence Mosey was driving in this direction on the bridge. He was coming from the 6th Avenue Sheets, headed into the Juniata section of Altoona. Walk through this courthouse door and expect to empty your pockets and walk through security. Well, that's what one lawyer tried to do, except he also tried to bring a gun with him. She says Gomez was the only one that brought a gun to a fist fight. So he stands and epitomizes those broken policies that has to be replaced. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your thank time you. tonight. We're going to send it back to you in the studio for the rest of this election night coverage. Lena Deontay Moy's mother says she's never spoken out before because this case has nothing to do with her. She says it's about the actions her son and others knowingly took and the consequences they will all have to face. Even a year and a half now, it's so unbelievable. Taisha Meek's son, Deontay Moy, is accused of murdering Stephanie Waters. The incident happened in January 2015. My son had some issues, drugs and emotional issues. I've gotten him counselors, I've gotten him social workers, I've put him in rehab, I've gotten him every help that I could get him. It wasn't no steps I didn't take as a mother for my kid, not one. But do I have a, in my mind that he's going to walk out the door and go kill someone? No. Who's thinking that? He was home by curfew. What reason did I have to question his actions that evening? None. Meek says she's faced a lot of scrutiny as Moy's mother. How do you raise a murderer that makes no sense? I'm a mother of five. He is the oldest of five children. Who raises their child to be a murderer? Meek says whatever her son did, the evidence will speak for itself. I'm not here to protect him. But the reality of it is, none of us were there. Only people who know what happened were the people that were there. Not going to say he didn't play a role in it. He was there. But we don't know what that role was. Do you think he's innocent? Do I think he's innocent? <laughs> not exactly. Let me say that there's a role he played obvious. Do I think he could have killed her? No. I'm preparing myself for it either way. If he didn't do it, so be it. He still played some role because he was there. He could have called the police. He could have even told me what happened. He chose not to for whatever reason. And he will suffer for it. Now the case is going to trial. The next step is a status conference set for July 5th, where Moy and his attorney will figure out how to move forward with this impending trial. The next National Equal Pay Day is April 12th. This date symbolizes how far into the year women must work in order to earn what men earned in the previous year. One local business owner in Bedford says it's a struggle she knows well. Rika Patterson opened Hebrews Coffee Company 10 years ago. It was a struggle trying to get out there and making my face the face of the store as a woman. Um, you have to be strong. A stay at home mom with no business experience, Patterson proved her community wrong. They told us that we wouldn't last more than three months. People in the community said that. Every April, Bedford County Commissioners recognize Equal Pay Day. We as commissioners believe that that regardless of what the, the sex or the nationality is, that we, people ought to be paid the same. It is very important um, for our leaders to also be pushing for this. I mean, times have changed. They have changed so much. But more than 50 years since the National Equal Pay Act passed, and women are still paid less than men. Well, I'm a woman, and I have a business, and I think all women that have businesses feel that they need equal pay. Even as a business owner, Patterson felt just a step behind. I felt very inferior. 
even though I was a very tall woman, they always say beauty is an asset in the industry as well. I just felt very, very inferior. The U.S. Census Bureau found full-time working women in 2014 earned a median income of around $39,000 to men's $50,000. There is really no reason other than physical strength and some other aspects, you know, if we're doing exactly the same thing, why it shouldn't be the same pay. Reporting in Bedford, Lauren Hanley, WTAJ News. They put their lives on the line because they took an oath, but working a high-risk job for low pay and no benefits can take a toll on part-time police officers. They told us when we graduated, 98% of us are going to start with part-time jobs and it's going to be hard to get that full-time position. I'm thinking to myself, ah, it can't be that hard to get full-time. Here I am over a year later. A year out of the police academy, which cost him $5,000, patrolman Lance Morris splits his time between Duncansville and Martinsburg Police Departments, all while looking for a full-time position to better support his family. We're a training ground. We know that. Uh, because we can't offer benefits, because we can't offer uh, really great pay. According to the Department of Community and Economic Development, up. about 20 percent of all police officers in Pennsylvania are employed part-time. That's largely due to budget cuts. Municipalities in some cases will start to fold to that. One of the first areas that you're cutting in a budget is going to be your public service. It's the largest expenditure that your municipality will have. Many officers in our region make as low as $12 an hour. On top of that, they have to buy their own duty gear and gun. Part-time, no benefits. Patrolman Morris admits it's a struggle. You can't live off 40 hours a week, so you hope you get the 40 hours. You have to work 60 to make decent money to raise a family. The pay that they're making, sadly, is, is in some cases shameful for what you're asking them to do. They're not just writing speeding tickets. Lloyd Reed Jr. was a part-time police officer. Last November, he was killed while responding to a domestic call. With this job, you don't get to deal with the good too much. You know, more than likely if you're going on a call, it's for something bad. But, you know, you go from everything to helping a lady that's stuck in her scooter in the park to you have a guy in his house that's shooting at the police officers. A bad day in this profession. Your family's planning a funeral for you. With such high risk and little pay, fewer people want to wear a badge. As a whole, it feels thankless at times. You're scrutinizing everything you do. You're underpaid. You can't get full time. You can't get benefits. Representative Frank Burns runs the Push Out the Pusher program. He suggested a regionalized police force. If they regionalized, they would be able to have 24 hour coverage. Now, that police officer may be in the neighboring tent municipality, but he will get there much quicker than a state police officer would. He says it would help save and pool enough money from multiple municipalities to be able to afford full-time officers, benefits included. That way, each municipality wouldn't have the cost of buying new equipment, maintaining a building. It would all be in one building, same police cars for all the municipalities that join. Chief Ott says in small communities, it's not that easy. If you don't establish the proper structure to regional for purchasing services elsewhere, your community suffers. Everybody wants the actual physical location of the police force in their area. And that's, that's a hurdle we have to get over if we attempt to do something like this. Burns says there have been talks in Harrisburg about allowing county sheriffs to have more authority, as well as growing the state police force. But there has been no movement yet. Reporting in Blair County, Lauren Hanley, WTAJ News.